Hi, it's Mike with AskTractorMike.com. Got a viewer letter today about uh, engaging and disengaging front wheel assist or mechanical front wheel drive. And that can be an issue as the tractor gets older. Let's get to the letter. Letter comes today from Vince. And Vince says, do any small tractors have automatic four wheel drive? In other words, you can put the four wheel drive on and the tractor knows when to take it off. I have trouble getting my four-wheel drive engaged and disengaged on my tractor. Well Vince, uh, I'm going to give you a trick if you're having trouble getting your four-wheel drive engaged or disengaged that your dealer will use. If you load the tractor up and bring it to the dealer, this is the first thing they'll do to get it disengaged if it's locked in four-wheel drive or if it won't go in. But first let's talk about your, your main question is, does anybody make a tractor like that? that automatically does the four-wheel drive engage and disengage. Or, or, I guess what I should say is you, you put it in front-wheel assist and you leave it and the tractor engages it and disengages it automatically. And the answer is, at one time they did. Uh, and I was around when that invention came out. And it was a great invention for peace of mind of knowing you were always right with four-wheel drive. You weren't going to tear up your drive line or put excessive wear on your tires but it had a couple of issues that kept it from being widely accepted. So the invention came when everybody in the industry was trying to go to tighter turning radiuses. There was a move, and I want to say this was probably in the late 90s, early 2000s, to get mostly farm tractors where they would turn tight. The farmer came to the end of the rows, he wanted to whip the tractor around and go back the other way, as fast as he could because the quicker you can get your job done on a farm the more production that you raise, the more crop you raise. And so there was a, an effort underway and it was led by New Holland to make tractors that turn tight. And so they came out with an invention called Super Steer. And Super Steer was a front axle that not only uh, turned tight, the whole axle turned. So when you, you turned the tractor, you were turning your wheels as your front axle was pivoting. And I mean you could turn on a dime with the super steer option. And they first came out with it in their big tractors, and farmers loved it. They, they get to the end of their rows, they could turn tightly and go back, back the other way again. It, it sped up farming. Because this option kept four-wheel drive engaged, almost all the time except when you were turning it had an automatic engage and disengage and it knew when you were starting to turn to disengage a four-wheel drive and when you got back in the row to engage it again um, I think it also had a sensor in there that knew when you were in road gear you were going fast it knew if you were braking to engage it because you need sometimes you need the four-wheel drive to help with braking so there's a lot of things that super steer did and after they brought it out on the bigger tractors, real innovation, they brought it out on small tractors. And you could order, a, I think the smallest tractor that it had it was a TC-29, that was 29 horsepower. They had it on the TC-33, TC's 35s, 40s, and 45s, I think were where you could get it. Well, it was a great option. The mechanism that engaged and disengaged four-wheel drive was called Sensatrack. With sensor track, you just engage the front wheel assist and you could turn tight and, uh, and it, it was a great option and, and if you'd never operated a tractor before, it was okay. You just put it in front wheel assist, left it in front wheel assist and the tractor knew when to take it out. It was a great selling feature. Now you're probably wondering how much did it cost? Well at the time, the difference between a super steer tractor and a non super steer was about $1,000. And, you know, $1,000 was worth more then, but it, it really, for what you were getting, it wasn't that much. And, and plus, you, if you were in tight areas, you could really steer tightly. If you were, you know, brush hogging and you came to the end of the road and you wanted to whip and go back the other way, you could do that. So there were some tremendous advantages to it. Two big disadvantages to it. One, the design meant that whenever you started to turn, the axle went out as it was starting to turn, if you were close to something on the side that you were turning away from, you could hit it. In other words, if you drove it in the barn and you were right next to a wall, and when you were coming out, you turned it, it would swing out and, and kind of move the tractor a little bit. 
So you had to be real careful in tight areas uh, about running a super steer tractor around. The other disadvantage on a side hill, if you started turning up, it turned the whole center of gravity of the tractor to a different place that you might not expect. So it's kind of a little bit dangerous on side hills. And so those were the two big disadvantages of super steer. And it was on the market from probably, I'm going to guess, the late 90s to probably around 2008. And then New Holland changed their tractors completely and went to a different uh, design, different supplier. And that was the end of that option. And you may know that tractors in that area that were New Holland were also case. They were the same tractor painted a different color. But the super steer option was only available to New Holland. So you won't see it on a case tractor of that era that was the same thing. And the way you could tell if it was a super steer or not was the loader model number, which is what you kind of see from a distance when you're looking at it. If it was a 14LA loader or a 16LA loader, it was, it was a non-super steer. If it was a 15LA or a 17LA, it was super steer. And the reason being, with the axle moving around under the tractor they had to have a little different loader configuration and I think the only difference was where the cylinders went were mounted and there were holes there to change them but uh, if you've got a if you're looking at a used tractor and it's got a 16 LA or a 14 LA on it it's likely not super steer if it's got a 15 LA or a 17 LA it likely is so that's a long answer to your question Vince to my knowledge nobody else on the smaller tractors has an auto Engage and disengage, that does require some extra electronics. The bigger tractors, the farming tractors, pretty much all of them have got it, uh, except the economy models. To my knowledge, now I've been out of business a while, if you know of a smaller tractor that's got auto engage and disengage at four-wheel drive, put it in the comments down below and let Vince know. But if you've got trouble uh, engaging or disengaging your front-wheel assist, here's what's going on. As I've explained in previous videos, when you are in, engaged in four-wheel drive on a tractor because your front tires are smaller and your back tires are bigger, your front tires are powered a little faster than the back tires. They're, since they're not the same size, they can't go the same speed, so the front tires are pulling the tractor forward. As those tires wear, they get shorter and, and all of a sudden that ratio is accelerated. And so what, what's happening when you can't get it out of four-wheel drive is generally you've got kind of a bind in there with the gears. The, the tires are pulling fast and all those gears are tight together. So if you want to get it out of four-wheel drive, if you're locked in, take your loader bucket and it's got to be a loader equipped tractor, put it flat on the ground, lift the front wheels up, that'll allow that bind to come out and then you can pull your lever up and disengage your front wheel assist. And same thing if you're trying to get into four-wheel drive and you can't. Uh, if those gears aren't matching up, uh, just lift your front end off the ground with your loader bucket and you should be able to engage. But that's the answer, Vince. I don't think you can find a tractor today under about probably 90 horse or maybe even bigger that has that automatic four-wheel drive engage and disengage. I appreciate you watching my videos. I would be honored if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you can do that by clicking the mic face icon and checking the bell so you get notified when I post future videos. Here's a link to my website and the Tractor Fun Store with cool things for sale for the tractor owner to help support my channel. And here's another couple of videos you might want to watch. Thanks for watching.